We're already in the middle of May. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Grift Talks, show where we talk every Friday, talk about NASCAR, talk about Grift Dog, how life's going, how NASCAR is going, anything really in NASCAR that is relatable within the last week or so. So let's just give a little update to One More Spark and a little bit about my life as well. So in terms of One More Spark, you guys are wondering, where's the prologue, Griff Dog? Why hasn't it been up and out yet? So a couple of things related to that. So first of all, a big reason why it has not come out yet is because of work. Not work like on the video and stuff, but like I also have another part-time job. On Tuesday, that was a day I was supposed to work on One More Spark, but I ended up taking a shift at my work. So because of that, that made me lose time working on it, and thus my whole schedule is delayed a little bit. Also, this Saturday, I am also starting up another part-time job. And so I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram last fall, but I actually do some shooting for a local dirt race track. So if you guys are wondering how did I get the camera shots that I do in Air 2003, a huge inspiration is doing the same shots at my local racetrack. So unfortunately that does take up a little bit of my time, but in this day and age where money is everything, I gotta do what it takes to survive. So, um, But another reason too why I'm doing this is because I am going to be hitting hard on the quality aspect. And so if you guys would check my Facebook and Twitter, one big reason why I am taking my time with this is I'm going to try to use as little pictures from like Google Images as possible. There is going to be some in order for me to prove my point. Like for example, driver shots. I'm not going to be able to like draw their faces or something like that. Like I'm going to use those pictures, but for every picture I use, I will credit them. I'll have them up on like the top right screen here. So with that being said, it is going to take a little longer. And also I understand copyright. Like I, I, I understand that's a tough subject, but also like someone else created like the pictures and some of the other things. And I want to give credit where credit is due. So it might get a little annoying in the prologue, but it is definitely necessary. But you will also see some other footage that I would shoot myself. Not just like in Ernest Files 3, but I'm also going to shoot this stuff with the camera that I have right here as well. So right now, my plan is next Thursday. So my hope is Wednesday you'll see the diecast of the week, Thursday will be the prologue, and then Friday we can have another episode of Griff Talks. So... And then one last thing, you guys remember the second episode of Griff Talks? Remember when I got a haircut? Look how long it is now. Like, look at, look at that. Like, my hair is already down to my eye. So, I know you guys don't really care about me so much, which is totally fine. Like, that's the point of this channel. But if you guys care at all, I'm going to continue to grow the hair out, pull the uh, Ryan Blaney, if you will, until the end of May. Then I'm going to probably cut it short again. I'm going to probably keep the hat because, again, it's for Dale Earnhardt Jr. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comment section down below. Now let's talk about Talladega. So, first of all, on Sunday, I was so close to making a Raw Thoughts video from the race. The problem was I was at work when that happened. So, unfortunately, I am not able to do that, but I definitely want to talk about it. So the Xfinity Cup guys, as, you, as mentioned, were there. The Xfinity race was, it was all right. Like, it still had a couple of wrecks, and Eric Almarola won. And despite it being, what, his third win in his career and the second with that team, he did win under green, though. There was a wreck on the last lap where my driver picked Bubba Wallace. He hit the inside wall hard, actually. But I believe he drove it back. Let me know if I'm wrong. But... Eric Amarola won the race, and yeah, it was definitely an all right race. There were plenty of different leaders, and the only thing I was a little surprised about was how early the race was run. I feel like it had to do with the rain that came on Friday, but honestly, it, it doesn't really phase me much. It just was interesting, because previous Talladega races were more ran like in the later afternoon portions. Now let's talk about the cup race. Whew! What a race. So as I mentioned, I was at work on Sunday, and so, oh man, I almost messed up. 
because I was at work. Because like while my work was going on, I was like fist bumping like, yeah, Stenhouse. And oh, it was horrible. Anyway, Ricky Stenhouse finally gets his first career win at Talladega holding off Kyle Busch. Oh, I hope he gets a lot of fans. That was, that was amazing. That was some good driving by him and uh, he parked it for Brian Clawson. So good for him. I'm very glad that he was able to get that done. On the flip side of the coin, Ryan Blaney, my pick to win, ended up having a solo crash and it took him out of the race finishing like 38th, 39th, I believe it was. So, yeah, not a good day for my picks because Dale Jr., my uh, driver to watch for, he, uh, I believe he had a tire going down. And, yeah, that didn't really help either. But the biggest thing I want to talk about was the big one that happened. That was one of the most misleading big ones that happened. Because, spoilers, AJ Allmendinger and Chase Elliott in turn number two, Allmendinger was bumping Elliott. And I have diecasts, so let's throw a couple of diecasts out. Uh, let's hold on. I got this. Uh, let's do you and you. Okay. So, coming into turn number two, we're going to say that this is Chase Elliott, right? And then this is Almanager. Okay. So, they're coming into turn number two, right? And so, the car gets really loose, right? And so, when he gets loose, he overcorrects it and he spins. Then Almanier gets spun by Labani, or not Labani, this is Labani, Kevin Harvick, and Harvick spins Almanier out. Now, when Chase Elliott was sideways, another car comes in and hits him on the side, and he ends up flying like that. When I first saw that, I thought Elliott was going to flip and like fly into the catch fence. That did not happen. And so what happened was he was in the air, he landed on like the, what do you call it? The, what do you, safer barrier, that's what it's called. And so he rode the wall for a while and then landed like on all fours. The misleading part though was Almendinger because Almendinger was like, he was spinning sideways for a while, but then another car came and I believe it was Trevor Bain, hit him sideways and for whatever reason that picked him up and he rolled over like that. Because yeah, when you first saw the wreck, Chase Elliott was going to flip, but the, the flipping gods, or whatever you want to call them, decided, no, Chase Elliott, you are not going to flip. We're going to let Almendinger flip. And I feel like the whole has to do with karma, because a lot of people are not a fan of AJ Almendinger for spinning Elliott out in the first place. I mean, he didn't intend to. He was just pushing Chase Elliott along. But it was what happened, the after effect, that made people not a fan of Almendinger. But karma decides to come around, and Almendinger is the one that flips, not Chase Elliott. Elliot. So, what a uh, very interesting race. Stenhouse wins, bunch of wrecks. I'd say it's a pretty good day. Now, let's talk about the ARCA series. Now, this is a series I normally don't really talk about here because it's more NASCAR, but this is more important. The biggest reason why was because the ARCA race at Talladega was the final race that ARCA uses the Gen 4 cars. Because it sounds like moving forward, every race, it's going to be their special edition of the Gen 6 car. So, Justin Haley, who you've seen on the truck series a few times, he won the race. And it was a pretty exciting race. You have quite a few leaders. There was one big crash on the French radio where a few cars got into the air. And it caused a red flag. So, definitely a lot going on there. But the one big thing that was really interesting from what I heard... It was on social media. It was the 22 and 77 teams. I think it was like Cunningham Motorsports or something like that. One of their cars was actually Sterling Marlin's 2002 Daytona 500 car. The one where Marlin got out of his car to uh, repair the damage under red. The one that pretty much killed his chances to win the Daytona 500. Yeah, so that car was either the 22 or the 77. It wasn't confirmed which one it is. But it is one of those. So uh, that's a nice little um, turnaround, if you will. But anyway, rest in peace, Gen 4. You are an absolutely beautiful car. And definitely wish you were back. But it looks like times have changed and we're moving on. And so I know a bunch of people are not happy with the fact that I'm sticking with the Gen 4 through all of One More Spark. But I just wanted to play the what if of what if NASCAR never changed its car body. 
not even to the Gen 6. And the big thing I think has to do with just downforce and the way how the car is designed. Because even though Gen 6 is better than the car tomorrow, the front is still more boxy, if you will, as I show you Junior's car here. See how it's more like straight up and down? Whereas, let's get another car in here. Okay. Whereas this car, it seems like, okay, it's a little more boxy, but it's also, you got a little more of a curve right here too. So eh, it's probably not the best of examples, but you could say the splitter is one thing, but I would also have to say just the body as a whole. So I feel like it's because of the cars that have such good racing, but I've been wrong before, so you never know. Now let's talk about Carl Long. So Carl Long, the first time I've ever really heard that name was like 2001, 2002. He drove a special 85 car and it wasn't really competitive. Failed to qualify a lot of races, but he still raced a few times. Really got to know Carl Long in 2004. If you didn't know already, in 2004, which was the last Rockingham race, Carl Long flipped six or so times down the back straightaway. So the reason why I'm talking about him today is because he's making his first cup start in, oh boy, like six years, I believe it is. First cup start, I want to add, because he's been doing Xfinity and truck races, but at not on the actual cup level. Reason why? In 2009, he was penalized $200,000, 200 points, and was suspended 12 races. And the reason why? The engine he used was too big. And Carl Long did not have an advantage at all. No, in fact, he was, I believe, dead last. And this took place in the All-Star Showdown, by the way. The race before the All-Star race. So, yeah, it's one of those very weird things where it's like, what the heck happened? And so Carl Long, he could not pay the $200,000. So pretty much he was banned from the Cup Series until he was able to meet some required conditions. It sounds like he was able to meet those conditions last week, and there's only 40 cars entered into this Kansas race, so Carl Long, pending sponsorship, of course, will be in the race this weekend. I don't think he's gonna do much good in terms of competition-wise, but, you know, if there's a big wreck on the first lap or two, Carl can pass a few good drivers and maybe get a solid finish. It's a long stretch, but you know what? I'm hoping Carl Long can do some good this weekend. And speaking of this weekend, that we are going to Kansas this weekend. It is our first night race of the season, like 100% night, like Saturday night special. We got the Cub guys and not the Xfinity guys this weekend. It is trucks. So that's going to be a little fun. So Trucks and Cup is going to be in Kansas. Trucks racing Friday night. Cup guys racing Saturday night. Right now, as I'm recording this, there's only 31 trucks entered onto the truck race. I feel like a big reason why is the driver of the 51 truck this weekend, Kyle Busch. So Kyle Busch, again, he's going to give us another reason why NASCAR is not doing as well as it was 15 years ago, but that's a rant for another day. But... Kyle Busch, he is going to be in the 51 truck this weekend. That is, I believe, the only cup guy that is going to be in the truck race this weekend. I need to double check that, but I believe that's what's so. And then the cup series, other than Carl Long, there's nothing really different, if you will. On the truck series side, I do have Kyle Busch winning. Like the truck series race, it's going to go either one of two ways. Either Kyle Busch is going to win and dominate, or it's going to be a fairly competitive race. My driver to watch out for is John Hunter Nemechek. If I remember correctly, he did pretty good in the truck race last year. So I could definitely see him doing some good this year. And so he'll be one to watch out for this Friday. Now this Saturday, the driver who I have to win is Kansas' own Clint Boyer. He's been definitely kicking it up these past few weeks. And I think he'll be the second Haas driver to win this season. The driver I do have to watch out for is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And the reason for that is because I want to see where his momentum goes from last week. 
I really hope that he does not be like another Michael Waltrip where he only wins restricted play races and that's it. I want to see him win more. I want to see Jack Roush do more because, I mean, he broke a winless streak of 101 races for Jack Roush. And so, again, I really hope that does carry forward with the intermediate and short and road courses. That is it for this episode of Griff Talks. If you guys got anything to say, let me know down in the comment section down below. If you have any questions for One More Spark, also let me know. And hopefully it will come out. But as I said before, I am huge on quality. I want to be the guy that actually makes stuff for people to review and react. Because I know there's a lot of channels that do a bunch of reviews and a bunch of reacts. I want to be the guy that actually makes stuff for people to review and react. So... That'll end it right here. Thank you guys, as always, for watching and the support. I still can't believe I am where I am now, and it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you guys for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.